welcome to Stories of Hope. I'm Christine Hotchkiss. Each week, I bring you stories that will educate you, inspire you, and give you hope, my biggest word of all. I want to thank my studio sponsor, The Motivated Mind Group, your global agency, creative agency, located right here in downtown Chandler. Today, my guest is Lauren Stuyvesant. She served as a, in the Army for 10 years as a medic. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. In 2009, she was disappointed to find out that she had stage four throat cancer. She underwent surgery to remove the tumor on her esophagus and went through aggressive chemo and radiation. I've already got it going here. <laughs> During her treatment, her airway closed and she had to have a trach placed. We're just gonna start from there. Please help me welcome my guest, Lauren Stuyvesant. Welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. So you and I actually sat down. We're going to go back to where I started doing this was my cell phone <laughs> in your kitchen. <laughs> yeah, in my kitchen. In your kitchen. And I traveled a good distance like you did to be here. So thank you for coming here. And um, I get choked up because there are so many things that we take for granted, like breathing. Right? That is true. <laughs> We take so much for granted that um, we're going to see tomorrow, that we're going to be able to do what we did yesterday, and that's not always the case for a lot of people when something has changed. One of my guests told me that um, we are all one tragedy away from change, right? Yeah, we just have to truly just be blessed for every day, every moment of every day. You know, um, even that football game, if you watch that yeah. with the, the yeah. player, it's just like that. You just never know. You don't. So we're just going to get into your story right now because I know you personally and you already have to put your thumb on an airway that most people wouldn't think they have to be able to speak that way. Where did this all begin? Was there something that came about that said that you needed to uh, go for a normal checkup, for instance? Well, it actually happened, and um, we're going to go back to 2009 when it happened, but two years prior to that, um, in 2007, I was in three car accidents back to back, oh. and um, I was having a lot of back pain. So it was actually, I was seeing my doctor for the back pain, because it was just getting worse, but I thought it was from the car accident. And, then I just happened to mention, it's like, well, you know, I've got a little bit of an earache and I'm having more difficulty swallowing. It feels like water mm -hmm. is kind of like sitting on a table mm -hmm. when I swallow. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, let's go ahead and get you for an a endoscopy. Mm -hmm. It's been a year since you've had one. And you have a lot of you know, acid reflux you know, from the military. I got a lot of stuff from that. So she put me in for an exam, and that's when they found my tumor. So the tumor is being in your throat. In my throat, yes. It's on my epiglottis, which or was on my epiglottis, which is the flap that covers your airway, so that food and water don't go into your airway. Wow. So it's a whole new meaning to breathing and to eating. Yeah, so eating is definitely, yeah, I breathe through the tube or through this hole, and um, obviously I speak this way by covering the hole, but now I don't eat through my mouth. I have to eat through a tube. So you don't get to enjoy the taste of food? No, no. Oh, my gosh. Again, one of those things we take for granted, even if the food tastes bad. <laughs> Well, the good news is I can eat healthy now, so I mean, I don't, and I don't have to taste fish. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you for the humor in that. So this has been a, a long journey for the time frame and where we are now in January of 2023, and you're still needing to continue to do this. So yes. why is that? Well, I originally had a trach. Um, it was a device that was in my throat, and in... I have to look at my notes. That's I think okay. it was 2018. Um, a doctor kind of gave me hope that I could have it removed and close up my airway okay. and, you know, be normal so much. Sure. Well, if we went through three surgeries, but 
Unfortunately, if you've ever had radiation, it's a gift that keeps on giving years later. Okay. So from my um, experience, I've had the scar tissue, that's what closed up my airway, and it just kept coming back. So I did get the trach removed, but thankfully we kept the hole open because otherwise I wouldn't be able to breathe. So. So is this something that's ever going to be able to be, I don't want to say normal, because normal has a whole different definition these days. According to the doctors, this is the way it is for me. But I believe in a better doctor than the, our doctors here. So I have faith in believing the Lord for what will happen. Do you ever get frustrated that you have to continuously do that? or? No, I don't think I get frustrated. It's my normal. So, you know... Um, like when I'm worshiping and praising, I can put my hands up here. It's just so much easier for me. I, I just, yeah, I don't get frustrated at all. I think my husband gets frustrated <laughs> more than I do. Yep. And, and he likes it because if he gets mad at me, <laughs> he can just pull my hands and put them behind my back. <laughs> but I'm sure he loves you and he doesn't want to do that to you. He's like, oh, just sing trust to me, me he honey. does. <laughs> Um, what are your limitations then? I mean, my limitation, well, eating, um, obviously it's very time consuming because I choose to eat healthy. So I choose to create my own meals and having to blend them. Okay. And as you know, if I want to go somewhere, we have to bring all my supplies. I also have to wear oxygen, you know, when I sleep or if I'm at high elevations. Because I also have now, because of the aspiration, mm -hmm. which is all the food and water that's coming into my lungs, I have an, a thing called bronchiostasis, which is a form of COPD. Um, so I do have to wear oxygen occasionally. And so I have to bring all these equipment. And it's more of a hassle for my husband than it is for me, honestly. I'm so blessed to have my husband. You know. So he's a caregiver in a different scale. Yes. Oh, well, thank you to your husband, a great supporter that is behind the screen, and um, that is good to have. You need to have a support. Um, so when you are, so your food doesn't go through your mouth. Then. No. It goes probably straight, like, to, from a pouch that goes to your stomach? How does, well, how does that work? it's a tube that I connect. It's like a little spot here on my stomach, okay. and I connect a tube to it, okay. and I just use a syringe, and that's how I eat and drink. Okay, so here's my thought is when we put food in our mouth, it takes time to travel through our body. So we think we're getting our nutrients, but yours is going straight to the stomach. How are you getting your nutrients and everything you need for your body to survive? I, I just blend my food. I, I make my meals every day. So it doesn't matter how, okay. Yeah, and I add protein, you know. Interesting. So we really don't need our mouths for food. <laughs> A lot of us, never mind. <laughs> but the great thing is, I don't have to eat sugars, you know. Oh. I can skip all the bad stuff, and I can eat healthy. So the yeah. cravings then either? I can't say they're not there. I, okay, okay. I, and I can't say that I don't occasionally cheat. Um, but my doctor, and I would cheat more in the past because I wanted to eat, but my doctor had to actually told me, it's like, Lauren, I can't tell you what you can and can't do. Mm -hmm. It's going to be your choice, but if you keep on eating, mm -hmm. your lungs are just going to keep getting worse, and you're going to be on oxygen 100% of the time. Okay. And I think at that moment, when she told me I had the choice, it was like all of a sudden, like, I'm not being told I can't. I'm told I can choose. And so now, most of the time, I choose to be healthy. So. <laughs> When you found out that this was going to change your life, how did you feel? Well, which part, honestly? If we will go back to 2009, I was actually, it, it's, I don't know how to explain this, but immediately I was like, I've lost for words. And then my husband and I were just kind of hugging each other. We left the doctor's office and all of a sudden, I just had this unexplainable joy. And I can't explain it for the life of me, but I was excited because I was like, the Lord is gonna use me. 
Oh. And, and I just knew it, and I didn't know how. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly thought he was going to heal me at that time. I really did, and every other time after. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, and through all the hopes and disappointments, because, you know, when you have those high hopes of yeah. God healing, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it doesn't happen, there is that bit of a disappointment. But he's continued to keep giving me that hope and continue to keep holding on to me and continue to have me just keep going and knowing that even though it's not working out the way I planned it to work out, he's got a bigger plan in all this. I agree with you because when I heard that voice about, you're going to ask people to tell their stories, I went, who's talking? Because that's not going to happen because no one's going to say, yeah, let me just tell you uh, my story for whatever reason because people are private. But since I've been doing this, it's turned into be more of a public thing saying, I want to share because it helps me. And then also it helps other people who think they're on their own journey by themselves when in fact they're not. And that's, that's the best part I get to have from it all. I didn't realize what that voice was telling me that was going to make a difference in other people's lives that, that, that it has. Um, when you talk about how you, I, I believe you said, four times you were given hope that you're going to be able to have this sealed. And oh, there's been more than four times, trust me. Oh, wow. So you have, you have patience, too. And a lot of people don't like that word, patience. I know I'm one of them. And this isn't any other choice. You right. have to. So I heard the other day the definition of patience. And oh. Patience is long suffering. <laughs> and during that long suffering is the preparation stage. He's preparing you for the next thing. So. Oh, I like that. I like that. So in the several times that we won't give a number to of the disappointments of the hope that you had with being able to probably eat like the rest. Well, I'm not going to say the rest of us because that's been completely taken out of the equation. There are other people that are having to go through the same process of how they f eat. Um, how, how did you feel when you realize that you weren't going to be able to ever do that again. I mean, it, again, it's something we all take for granted. I don't think I've accepted it yet. Really? I, because I, I honestly believe the Lord's going to heal me still. So I'm just obeying right now and following until he t tells me otherwise. <laughs> um, but I also, I look at it as a reason of, I do health and wellness. And I don't think I've ever had the issue of dieting. And it's helped me to realize what women go through, or even anyone goes through, when they're trying to give up food. I'm like, I now get it, and now I can relate to them. I need a drink, sorry. No, absolutely, because you're having to do that. On, and that's one of the things that I'm not realizing. I'm usually the one that does a lot of the talking, and we're doing an equal amount of talking, but your airway is so different than mine. Mine's already, the body is making sure that there's the fluids there, and you're having to press on your, um, your throat to, for a hole that's there to talk and probably even talk more with your stomach as well with the muscles, am I right? Yeah, a and I don't have saliva glands from the radiation, so that was another thing that Tell happened. me more about when you said that the radiation is something that just keeps on giving. What part <laughs> is that? Um, okay, another thing that I was diagnosed with was called dysautonomia. Another fancy word, it's a fancy word for passing out. Okay. Just randomly passing out and getting okay. dizzy. So um, part of the radiation affected my artery and my vagus nerve. Okay. And so I just, my blood pressure will drop to about 64 over 54. And I, just, I don't have any warnings, I just pass out. Oh. So that's just, you know, another one of my blessings. <laughs> And a husband to make sure you don't pass out. Yeah, who's constantly <laughs> worried about me and watching me like a hawk. And he blames me for, you know, him getting older. <laughs> and kids. <laughs> okay. So you said you had hope. Is there still that possibility that the doctors can? Or we don't know? Doctors cannot fix what I have. They, they've given up. They, um, yeah, there's nothing more the doctors can do. But overall, everything else about you is healthy that you can still, okay. That's well, related my, to this. Well, my doctor, I was actually just at my doctor's this past month, and he said, Lauren, you have some very severe things going on in your body. 
but you can't tell on the outside. Right. You know, but I, I mean, he's like, I don't know how you do it with what's going on with you. I'm like, I've got the strength of the Lord carrying me every day and giving me that strength. So. If you think about it, a lot of us are walking around with stuff inside that it's not visible, that we're not going to know, even if a doctor doesn't say it, or we don't share it and we know how we feel. Um, it goes with, I don't like to use this phrase because we just went over the 2020 year where it was a mask, you know? Our face, our mask hides everything that, that is internal that we're feeling, or even medically. Um, so you talk about your health. No, I remember I was gonna ask you, there was a time frame in here where you actually had a little bit of a scare where you would have had cancer on the tongue as well. Well, I did have cancer. Oh, you did? Two years ago, actually, on the tongue. And thankfully, I, we, I was able to catch it early enough, and I just had a portion of my tongue removed, and that's probably why you hear some slurring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. um, but last year, I had the scare of it coming back again, but okay. thankfully, that one did not come back. Oh, my gosh. Another miracle walking around, yeah. and with such great hopes and such a great spirit. Now, you are currently involved in something that um, we talked about. Do you want to share what that is as far as the health goes? Or the project that you just became a part of? Oh, well, I'm doing a summit right now. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're referring mm -hmm. to? Yes. So back in 2014, when I was, I mean, I was in bed and literally, I mean, I was ready to give up. I honestly was. And I just cried out to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I go, either you heal me or you take me home. And at that point, I mean, I was, I just didn't have a good life. I didn't feel good. I was tired all the time. I was in severe pain constantly. And um, I was led to some amazing products, you know, supplements. And within six months of being on those supplements, it really changed my health. Mm. And so I started this business. When I found out about it, I instantly was excited about the hope for my healing, right? And so I jumped into it for my health. But I also saw I was very lonely because when you don't feel well, you don't have friends, you don't have community. So I was very excited about jumping into community of women, you know, especially being in the Army. I mean, I wasn't used to being around women. Mm -hmm. But I also saw the opportunity for money. So I'm like, okay, it's got healing, you know, for healing, it's got community, and it's got money, you know, <laughs> all good things, right? So I jumped in full, full speed with this, you know, expecting to do the business, but <laughs> the Lord is so good with me. I failed miserably for the first five years of doing my business. And just like with my, my, um, health, I would have these high hopes and disappointments, high hopes, and, and but I, he kept, I, I just kept going. He just kept telling me to go. For the last two years, though, I didn't work my business at all. I'd actually quit working my business, and I just started doing a lot of personal development and training. Um, and I realized that I really had a lot of self-work to do, you know, Believing in myself, you know, the um, self-doubt, the just all these things about myself that I development that I had to work on and overcoming <laughs> a lot of issues. But the whole time it's like when I wanted to start the business, I really wanted to just glorify the Lord and bring hope to other people. That's always been my desire. But recently the Lord had me doing a summit you know, with this training. And the summit I'm doing is interviewing um, Christian women who are, you know, leaders in the industry and how the Lord led them into their business. Well, and with that as well, he also led me to a Christian organization where I can um, grow my personal and professional development and help other women. You know, it's a biblically based one, so the Lord led me in that direction. You know what I find interesting? The connection with business and putting things aside were full. Uh, we already mentioned how I came to your house with my, my, my cell phone. That's how I started doing this. 
And because I had this mission, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. And I gave up for a little while too, because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then we, somehow we get stuck in our heads. I don't know why that when we don't have community, then we feel that we don't have self-worth. If we don't have the friends, or we don't have the feelings that other people we feel should be giving us, then we, we're like, you know what, I'm just done. But it doesn't work that way. We don't just say, I'm done, so okay, well, that's it. It doesn't work that way. It goes with the word patience. It's like, it's a long process. Of course it is. Long suffering. <laughs> a long suffering. Yeah, I don't like that word suffering, but yes, it is. And then it brings you back to you and your health. You've mentioned it many times, self-development. We're always a work in progress, yes. a constant work in progress. And whether we have a story of loss like myself or illness like others or something that was unforeseen that has put you in a direction, it brings you back full circle again and it comes back to who you were when you weren't feeling so great about the change that now took place in your life. So it sounds like now through this summit, it's not only giving you the community you spoke about, your self-worth, you're not different at all. Yet we all look at each other and say, I'm different or I want to be different, but we're really not different. <laughs> we really are not. We all have the same needs just at different times. We have things that could happen to us or they don't and something else does. No one, no one is um, not, I, what as I said, we're all one tragedy or one thing that could happen to us um, to change our lives. And this changed your life that brought you back to where the Lord says to you, Lauren, this may have happened to you and you have felt this way along this process, but now I'm bringing you back around to where now you know who you were before this all took place. Doesn't that feel good? It's amazing. You know, it's funny, before all of this happened, uh -huh. I wanted to be a speaker. And the <laughs> Lord is like, okay, Let's develop you first, you know, yes. and do all this, you know, with a trach. Yeah. And then when I started speaking, because of my radiation, I had to have my teeth removed. Okay. And I was in, when I was working, I was doing a training class. And I'm standing in front of a class. I had the, the trach, the apparatus that I had before, mm -hmm. and no teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm teaching a group of people. And the Lord is like, see, you're not shy. You can do this. You can do it with a trach and no teeth. Wow. Um, and I used to be afraid of speaking in front of three people. So Lauren, you just went outside so many comfort zones yes. that no one else would think to do. And I'm going to tell you, you are a speaker. You are a speaker whether you had your teeth or you have this or whatever different things that, could, that have happened to you. You are a speaker, and that's what this summit is doing with the people that you're in the community of, that you're sharing your story right now. That's a speaker moment, and you get to take that with you wherever you go. Well, that's it, and the Lord just, he just lets me speak, whether it's on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, I see your I stuff. just, I'm not afraid to share my story. The mm -hmm. Lord gave me that years ago mm -hmm. to share my story, and so I'll share it wherever he wants me to share it, if it gives one person hope. Perfect platform to say that on. <laughs> I love it. it. Each time I sit down with someone, it just reiterates more and more where that voice I never saw it come from that says, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I'm just the vehicle, I'll call it. Where I'm sitting, where sitting was another avenue of people that believed in what I'm wanting to do for my message. And each person that sits here gets to do the same thing and and I'm, it's only for this short amount of time but it will go on and on and on just like your summit and, and before I ask my final question I want to know more about where someone can learn more about the summit so that if another lady is sitting out there saying I want to know more or that's me or I need that where could they find more information well they can text me and there's a phone number that they have they'll have on screen for you but just okay. text yeah. it to 480-462-5304 and just type in the word connect and we'll connect that's a good word because I'm I'm not going to say I'm sorry because that would be a really bad statement to say but ever since the change we had a couple of years ago connection is something we lost so for use the word connect, I feel like it's a piece of a puzzle that's coming together like it's supposed to. And if it doesn't fit that piece, it will fit some piece for the big picture. Yes. <laughs> and what is the mission of the summit? 
the mission of this summit is to give you wow. hope that if the Lord spoke to you to do something, then go with it and listen to these women who are successful and have followed their their dreams and they've really done something with the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just sharing the Lord. He's every um, tragedy that you've had in your life, mm -hmm. like yours, can be made for something bigger and another, a higher purpose than just you. You're here for something bigger. And I want to share this too because there are some people who will watch this or hear this because it's on both the audio and visual platforms, is you don't have to believe in God, but believe in something that gets you from one day to the next. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, we've got to have hope. It could be, it's disguised however we want it that gives us that inspiration for each day that we get up every day or that energy to get up every day. When I myself even go, not today. <laughs> yeah. My aunt, I think it was when I was 13 at a very, you know, impressionable age and struggling years mm -hmm. um, and I was struggling and my aunt had told me that I had a purpose and I honestly that has been my driving force for me for years I'm still it's like I'll oh, keep living and keep going until my purpose is done I have to tell you Lauren there's one phrase and I say it all the time when people say things happen for a reason really well I'm sitting here hearing yours You've seen mine and many more people that come through here is, maybe I don't like that phrase. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't like that phrase. <laughs> it's not maybe, it's I don't. But what I'm seeing is different words and ways that have shown that statement to be true. And so I thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk with you. So I do have one final question. It's not as difficult. And I tell everybody, and I don't know where I came up with this, because when I sat down with you in your kitchen, I love this, in the kitchen on my cell phone, I had this little app that I was like, like a movie maker kind of thing. And I was like, on a phone, mind you, you're looking at these images and I'm like, I got to cut it here. Oh, it took, we're not going to say how long, but I was determined to, to make it happen. Um, I had this one final question that I hadn't thought about until I've gone through my roller coasters of stuff and patience. Um, that this is where I came up with it. But before I ask, I know you have a paper here and you have notes. Is there anything I did not ask that you want to share or something that you want to mention that I didn't? No, I think you covered all of it. I don't know if that's possible, but okay. <laughs> 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 then I'll give you my, I'll ask you my final question. If there was one question that I only was able to ask, coming from me, the one that asks questions, <laughs> is this one, to know my idea about a person. What message would you like to leave everyone based on your journey? Never, ever, ever give up. Be more specific because a lot of people will say that, but you have almost tears in your eyes when you say that. So I want you to tell me. Okay, so this morning, for instance, <laughs> see why I asked the I, question. I was actually a little, I had some high hopes on something and it didn't happen and I was discouraged and I found my quiet time. I start my day with the Lord and I was very discouraged and it's like, Lord, why am I so discouraged about this? Mm -hmm. Why is it that I get discouraged about these things when I get my hopes up so high? on my health, my business, whatever it is. And I get crashing down. And then he led me actually to the story of Mary and Martha and Lazarus when Lazarus died. And reminded me of when Martha said, Jesus, if you had only, you know, had been here. And I'm like, okay, Jesus, if you had only done this, this and this, this wouldn't have happened, right? But then Martha said, but I, believe, I know you can ask God to do anything and he'll do it. And I trust you basically and I believe in you. And so it's like, even though I'm disappointed at times, I still know his bigger picture. It, it's bigger than what I can see or I can imagine. And it's not, his story is far greater than mine and his impact is far greater than I could ever have it be. So I will continue to always believe and trust in Him no matter what. 
You know, you said something earlier about the timing, and I'm learning timing is everything, the patience word. I'm still trying to figure that one out. Long suffering, I think, is what she said. Maybe that ex- I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> well, I knew when you answered it, there was more behind it because we don't just answer that and that's good to go. I go deeper on the question because I want to know too. I always want to be, I, I honestly, I strive every single day that I am given to be a better version of myself. I may have been a really great version yesterday, but I can be even better today by learning different things from different people, how to speak with them, how to listen better, you know, how to walk better, not physically, but walk through life better and be less judgmental with people, you know, that, but that's my choice. Um, that's who I, I feel that I was created to, to be through my own stuff. But when you come back full circle on this, whatever your high hopes were on what that is, and I learned this, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this statement too, is, Maybe it's not supposed to happen right now. Well, and it, it also has a lesson for me. And it's like, instead of saying, get mad, just say, what is it that I can learn from this? What is it that, how can I grow? Mm-hmm. You know, there's, mm-hmm. you're constantly growing, never stop growing. Mm-hmm. So. Thank you for being my guest. I didn't mean to make you cry. Yes, I did. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But it's good tears, oh, and that's, that's yeah. what I want. I want us to, to be real. There's so many things that we are covering up on our feelings that people don't really feel that it's okay to be vulnerable. And I'm like, no, if you're vulnerable, that means someone else can say thank you so much because I feel locked inside with my emotions. And then if I was to say or do, someone's going to go, well, why are you doing that? Or I'm uncomfortable. Well, there's other people that are not uncomfortable and want to welcome it. So thank you for being vulnerable at that point. Oh, thank you for for bringing me here and just you know, reminding me that it, it's not always easy, mm-hmm. but it's good. It's worth it. But I, I like that. It is worth it. It absolutely is worth it. Ooh, the things we take for granted and you just shared, whether it was your teeth, being able to breathe, or just to get up every day. So thank you. That's a lesson that I'm going to take away with from today. If you have a story you want to share, know someone who has a story that should be heard, please email me to the address of stories at christinehotchkiss.com. And if you'd like to be a sponsor, please also email me to the address of stories at christinehotchkiss.com. I want to thank my studio sponsor, The Motivated Mind Group, your global creative agency located right here in downtown Chandler. Until next time, everyone, I wish you well and you take care.